What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Behavioral Arts and this video is going to be a follow-up to the previous video. I'm going to answer some really great questions you guys had. I'm going to address some awesome observations you guys made in the comments. I'm going to comment on some developments that have happened since then and clarify a couple of things. Let's go. First and foremost, I want to thank all my existing subscribers for getting this video out there the way you guys did. It went beyond my wildest dreams. It's amazing to see how well it did and I can't thank you guys enough for that. And I want to welcome all the new subscribers. Welcome to this channel. And I don't really see this as a channel. I see it as a community where we all learn and grow together. So please always feel free to ask questions, leave comments, and I try as much as I can to get back to you guys and help you guys understand body language, behavior analysis, persuasion. I'm super passionate about that and super excited you guys are here. Okay, to kick things off, I want to give a big shout out to another video from another body language analyst that I really, really look up to. His name is Scott Rouse, and he wrote one of my favorite books on the subject called Understanding Body Language. This is a real gem of information. And on Instagram, he posted a short video with just the analysis of the punch, the walk up and the punch. It's less than a minute long, and he points out so many amazing things. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description. I hope you guys go check that out. This guy is the pro this guy trains law enforcement to recognize the body language of aggression. So if you don't listen to me, listen to this guy. He is literally the global authority on this subject. And one of the things he says in that video that I really, really love is that after the punch, we see Will Smith keep his eyes on Chris Rock. This is called fear of retaliation. Usually after an aggressive attack, we need a second to gauge what the other person is going to do, which is a good explanation as to why Will Smith kept his eyes on Chris Rock. Notice that his energy was decreasing. It wasn't escalating. Then he turned around and walked away. And to me, that's a big, big point on the side of this being real. Because otherwise, if this was staged, I think you have just walked up there, knocked him out, turned around and walked away like a big dramatic movie scene without needing to make sure that he's safe before he turns his back. So thank you, Scott, for pointing that out. Really amazing video. I hope you guys go check it out. Speaking of legends, let's now talk about Denzel Washington, or D, as Will Smith calls him. A lot of you guys had some great questions and comments about his demeanor when he's listening to the acceptance speech. Denzel said to me a few minutes ago, he said, at your highest moment, be careful, that's when the devil comes for you. <laughs> so you'll notice he's sitting there, he's got his eyes locked on Will Smith, and we're not seeing much movement. Typically when we agree with something or we're connecting with it, you see this, these movements, a lot of nods, a lot of yeah, a lot of this kind of stuff. We're not seeing much of that at all. He's pretty still. His eyes are glossed over. We could see that there's a little bit of moisture in there, which is usually consistent with sadness or being touched or, you know, deeply emotional things. But there's two things that are really interesting on his face, and that's tension up here. So we see those lines up here with that little dip and some tension down here. These are the exact two spots that we look at when we're looking for one thing and one thing alone, and that thing is grief. When someone is grieving or feeling for someone deeply emotionally, that's where we see the tension. So what does this mean? Well, it can mean one of two things. It could mean that he's actually connecting with this speech on an emotional level, and so the words are affecting him. But I think it's more likely that this is a kind man who is seeing a friend in pain. He's seeing a side of his friend, he knows this guy, they're close. He's seeing a side of him he doesn't recognize, and I think it's affecting him. I think he's sad. And I think that what he said to him during the break wasn't so much a warning as much as a commentary of what might be happening right now. I think he's scared for his friend. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. While we're on the subject of audience reactions of people in the crowd, I want to talk about Ingenue Ellis, who was one of the actresses in the movie, and Will Smith talks about her and the camera cuts to her and we see something deeply emotional in her face. Ingenue Ellis, who was one of the most, the strongest, most delicate people I've ever met. So she's straight up crying, there's tears in her eyes. She's looking at Will Smith and here's where baseline is really, really important. Because if I saw that expression on anyone else, a part of me would be inclined to think we're seeing anger there because we're seeing the eyebrows coming down like this as she's looking at him really, really still and her, and her head is turned towards him. 
But here's the thing. I've looked at an interview of Ingenue Ellis on the red carpet when an interviewer is complimenting her and, and congratulating her and saying nice things. I want you to look at her eyebrows in that moment. Ingenue, you look fantastic. This is a red carpet moment. Unbelievable. Congratulations. Her eyebrows do the exact same thing. They go downwards like this. And some people do that. When you compliment them, they go, oh, thank you so much. You're so kind. And the eyebrows go down. So in that moment listening to Will Smith, it's very likely that she's actually doing that same thing because she appreciates this compliment that he's saying and it's getting her emotional and she's connecting with what he's saying. I think there's a lot of that. There might also be a bit of emotion there because she obviously has a tight bond with this guy. They made this movie together. They've connected and she doesn't like to see his suffering just like Denzel Washington. But I do believe that she's deeply honored by his words in that moment. Okay, now we're going to move on and look at some new footage that has surfaced since then. And there's some really interesting stuff here. But before we get to that, do me a huge favor, guys. Hit that subscribe button, turn those notifications on for more behavior analysis content. Wanda Sykes, one of the three hostesses of the evening, was on The Ellen Show. And she was talking about the event, what happened, the slap, the repercussions, and all this stuff. And she did not agree with what Will Smith did. She did not agree with how the Academy handled it. So she had a lot of negative things to say there. But the key moment in what she was talking about was all the way at the end of her interview where she was talking about what Chris Rock said to her after the event. At one of the after parties, he came up to her and said this. I saw Chris, you know, at, at Guy's party. And, uh, and as soon as I walked up to him, the first thing he said was, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, why are you apologizing? He's like, it was supposed to be your night. It was supposed, you and Amy and Regina, y'all were doing such a great job. So let's look at her body language while she is telling that. First of all, her illustrators are exactly synchronized with her speech. Illustrators are the gestures we make with our hands when we speak. When we're making things up or trying to convince someone of something, we say the thing, then the gesture happens. Sort of like, I'm so angry, like that. Because we're really trying to drive that point home and our brain is thinking, okay, how can I make that more convincing? Oh, slam your hand down. But when we're being honest and telling truthful stories, our hands move with our words. And in that, she is perfectly synchronized. This is fluid thought coming out as she recalls what was going on. But let's look at her eyes. Now, there's a lot of misinformation about eye direction out there, all these articles online and cute little social media posts that'll tell you, oh, if you see someone's eyes going this way, it means they're really recalling something and this way is they're making it up. That's a myth. It is a very loose generalization, but the most important thing with eye direction is to look at the person specifically and see what their eyes do. Earlier in this interview with Ellen, Wanda was talking about her being in the dressing room and somebody coming and showing her the footage of what happened and she's recalling this event and her eyes go straight down into her right. Now, downwards is typically emotional, but in this case, she's recalling, she's even recalling somebody showing the phone and she says, phone, we see her eyes go right there. And this is where she goes as she's recalling. So I ran to my trailer because I wanted to, to watch him. And then, you know, so I was getting changed and watching him. And then from the moment I went from the trailer because I wanted to be in the house to watch. So I, what, what is, is this really happening? And and then someone showed me on a video, it was like, yeah, he, he smacked Chris. And I just felt so awful for my, my friend, you know. Her eyes go between this and Ellen, this and Ellen. And when she tells this story about Chris Rock at the after party and what he said to her, we see the exact same thing. Her eyes go down here and to Ellen. So she's recalling that conversation. It's affecting her a little bit because she, she felt for Chris Rock, then back to Ellen. So what does this mean from a body language standpoint? It means that it's very likely that Wanda is telling the truth. We're not seeing indications of deception that usually come with someone who's trying to fabricate a story. She is giving a truthful story. So if this is staged and if this was a big orchestrated thing for publicity, Wanda does not know about it. She legitimately is telling the story of an apology that she got from her friend Chris Rock. All right, now for the big leaked video on TikTok where somebody posted a video of a separate angle where we see Jada's reaction while Will is coming back. This blew my mind. So after the slap, Will is walking back to his seat and Chris delivers the line, Will Smith just slapped me. And we see Jada laugh. Jada laughs and she does that. We see her, I and mean, we don't see her face, but we see something that's very consistent with laughter, which is that sort of leaning forward, 
as she's probably laughing. So what is going on with Jada? I believe two things are happening with Jada. First thing that's happening with her is that she doesn't know if this slap was something that they planned. Is this part of the script? She probably knows her husband enough to know that this isn't something he typically does. Gets up and walks over to someone to slap him across the face. So she's probably just sort of laughing at the joke like, oh, I get it. This is a thing they're doing. The second thing that it's likely to be is typically when someone close to us does something to lose their composure, we do a nervous laugh to sort of be like, <laughs> everything's okay, don't worry about it. And it could very well be that she's doing this for the cameras, like everything's okay, don't worry about it, everything's cool, this is all the thing, because she doesn't really quite understand what the heck is going on. We see her stiffen up quite a bit when Will is yelling at Chris. That, that sort of natural movement she had is gone. So I think that's at that point that she realizes, oh wait, wait what is this? He's actually pissed. And then right after that, when Chris starts doing his bit again, she goes back to being animated. And notice also, she's not looking at Will. Greatest night in the history of television. <laughs> okay. There's no part of her going, hey, are, are you okay? Do you need to step out? Like, what's going on? We're not seeing that concern. My theory on this is that in her head, she's sticking to that script, trying to preserve that image, because she doesn't know if this is going to be edited out or if it's gonna stay in. Because if it's gonna be edited out, let's just laugh at the jokes, pretend everything's okay. I must admit, it's a very weird reaction and I'm not a real big fan of how he just supported her, you know, publicly slapped the guy, yelled at him, and she seems a lot more concerned with her image than just kind of looking over to see if he's okay. I mean, I can't see her eyes from this angle, so maybe I'm jumping to unfair conclusions, but we're not seeing like any, like turning her, are you okay? Just like even a quick something like that. The other place I struggle with this is, if this is staged, if it's orchestrated, then what on earth is the explanation for that? If it was a big plan, she would commit to that, the fact that they're pissed off at this joke, and she would sort of stick to that script. So I really struggle to see, if this is staged, why she didn't act and stay in that sort of, I'm pissed off frame. Before I go on to address some of your really insightful comments and give you guys a bit more clarity on some things, I want to really quickly address my credentials because as I was looking at the video, it dawned on me that in the video I didn't explain what my background is and where my information comes from because I honestly thought the video was just going to be for my fan base, most of which who know who I am, but I think it's important in today's day and age if you're getting information from a source to know that person's background. So my college degree is in sociology with a minor in psychology and this was my first initiation into studying human behavior, why we do the things we do, what the brain is doing in social situations, that was the basis of my education. Then I got a certification in criminal interrogation and this is where I really got all the body language stuff, the signals of deception, real emotion versus fake emotion, how to ask the right questions and all the stuff that interrogators use in law enforcement in the military and so on. The third thing, and this is where it gets a little complicated, is that besides doing seminars on behavior analysis, as a career, I'm an award-winning mentalist. And the reason I say this is complicated is because a lot of people out there misunderstand what a mentalist is. At its basis, mentalism is magic tricks. That's the base of it. We're not psychics, we don't really read minds, despite what a lot of mentalists out there say, it's not real mind reading. But Mentalists often study body language and persuasion to be able to make their performances a lot more psychological and that's what I've been doing for years. So I tour the continent and I perform my brand of mentalism which involves a lot of body language and behavior analysis and I present this show in theaters and on TV shows like The Today Show, The Rachel Ray Show, Entertainment Tonight and many more. So that's basically it, a lifelong obsession with understanding people and behaviors and body language and using that information to entertain. And now I lecture to teach this stuff to sales teams, university classes, and once again on television, on networks like the Discovery Channel and Netflix. And that's where it was kind of ironic and really adorable when a few people in the comments said that I missed the mark on what Chris Rock was experiencing on stage because I wouldn't know what it's like to be on a stage when I kind of really, really do. Speaking of Chris Rock on stage, let's move along and talk about a really great observation that a lot of you made about why Chris Rock was leaning forward as Will Smith was walking towards him. So in the video, I said that on stage, the lights are really, really bright. And when we move forward, we get the eye line under the lights where they're hitting it so we could see much better. And I very much still believe that. And some people asked, 
why is it then that he was able when he was doing his comedy to point exactly where people were? Well, first of all, during rehearsals, especially at big events, if there's going to be important people in the audience, we're often told exactly where they're going to be so that even if the lights are blinding us, we know where to direct our attention. So that's one part of it. Second, they're all much lower than him. So when he's looking down like this, the lights won't bother him. But if he's looking at something up in front of him, those lights are hitting him right in the face. So I do still believe that was a part of it. But a lot of you said that it could simply be that he's leaning forward because he feels like Will Smith is going to come whisper something to him or say something to him. And I absolutely believe that that's a big part of it as well. So thanks for pointing that out, guys. And I agree fully. When we're on stage, if often like a, a producer or, a, or an assistant or someone comes up on stage, we typically assume there's something going on and they want to tell us something. So we lean forward to hear them to, or to make it easier for them to come tell us what's going on. Finally, a few people said it's possible that this was like this, well, what do you got for me sort of vibe. You know how like they're going to go back and forth. So I thought they were doing a little bit. What's going on? We're going to improvise here. That's also possible. But basically, all these things point to one thing and it's he was just sort of trying to figure it out, trying to like see what's going Do you have something to tell me? Are we doing a thing here? So this is why his attention was leaning forward. Good job, guys. Love it. Speaking of great observations, a lot of you had something really great to say about when he said the word abuse in his speech. So we saw that face of disgust. And again, we saw that pronoun shift where he went from we to you. So the message is for a big group of people, but he's speaking about a specific thing. And I thought that it was about uh, Chris Rock and how he thought that that joke was abuse. But a lot of you pointed out the history that he has between him and Jada and that their marriage has been through a lot of rocky patches and he's talking about himself and some abuse that he's had to endure. So it's very possible. Look, like I said, I'm not a mind reader. I can't tell you exactly the specific thought that's causing it. All I can tell you is that in that moment, the message went from broad to specific and there's disgust associated to this. So it can very well be that. It can be the comment. It, there's no amount of body language that's going to tell us exactly what the thought is. So it could very well be. Finally, let's talk about still the same good old debate. Was this real or was it staged? Because in the comments, there were some great arguments for both sides. And I think it was clear in the last video that I'm not totally shutting down the idea that this was staged. All I'm saying is with my background, with my knowledge, with my experience, I'm seeing things that are more consistent with honesty and real emotions. But if with your experience you saw some things that you feel make this stage and you're not so convinced, I respect that and I respect your opinion. But there's a couple of arguments that have come up that just have to go. First of all, the argument, they're actors. This is Hollywood. They're, they're actors. What does that mean? Why, why are people saying that? It doesn't make any sense to me. That's a fact. It's not a motive. It doesn't, fine, they're actors. They could act, but that doesn't answer the why. Why would they do this? To me, that's as silly as you coming to me and saying, you went to a restaurant and you saw Johnny Depp eating a sandwich. And I go, what are you talking about? He wasn't eating a sandwich. He's an actor. Why would he, it was probably a prop. He wasn't eating, like, what's, you got to give a little bit more than they're actors. What does that mean? What, even if they're actors, yes, they're actors. I, I grant you that. I grant you they probably have the capacity to act something like this out. But what is the motive? So let's talk about motive. Chris Rock came out of this looking like a champ. You know, I certainly thought he handled that really well. And he sold out the tour that he's doing. So that's great. So I can look at that and go, okay, I can see what you're saying there. You know, Chris Rock got a lot of great publicity out of this. But if you're going to use what someone gained from this as an argument, you have to consider all parties. And Will Smith did not gain from this. He is getting demolished. He's having friends turn on him. The industry is sort of washing their hands of him. Everyone online is talking about how he handled that really, really poorly. So why would Will Smith have done this? You know, I saw a few people say, oh, it was for the hype. Will Smith doesn't need hype and especially not this kind of hype. Another argument that's coming up quite a bit is that the Academy orchestrated this because their ratings were dropping and they needed to do something to bring it up. And I can totally understand that. I can totally understand that the Academy would want to do something big and sensational and newsworthy to get people's attention once again. But this isn't it. Are you really suggesting that an organization that is dominated by white people went up to a black actor and said, we want you to go on stage and slap another black actor. And you're imagining that on top of that, Will Smith said, yeah, no, that, that's good. That's a good move for me. Let's, let's do that. I want to help you with your ratings. So I'm going to go slap another black guy on stage in front of the whole world just for your ratings. Come on. 
Okay, rant over. Sorry about that. I got a little emotional. But guys, we have to be open to each other's opinions. We have to be encouraging. And again, behavioral analysis is not something that will ever give us an exact thought, an exact motive. It just allows us to know what kind of emotion someone's experiencing, how honest they're being. And it's something that I love, but I'm always open to your interpretations because we're all human and we have different experiences. And a lot of you in the comments said things that to me was like, wow, that's really awesome. I didn't know that. And I'm so thankful that you guys were engaging in the comments. Welcome to all the new subscribers. I can't wait to keep going down this journey with you guys. And I will see you on the next video.